when I was seven years old, I was the fastest kid in my class. Why? Because the big neighborhood bully chose me as his favorite target. I happened to be the closest living smaller child. So by the time I was seven, I was really good at running away. Then he got really big really quickly. And by the time I was 10, I realized I needed a new strategy. I couldn't always outrun him anymore. So I started thinking, it's almost like I need a train or a plane to get away from him. Oh, a train or a plane. And I actually started going on exchanges. So when I was little, I went on student exchanges and summer exchanges to Quebec. Alors, c'est comme ça, j'ai pris le français. Alors, je parle, euh, je parle français couramment maintenant parce, à cause de ça. So that's how, thank you to the bully, I actually learned French uh, Québécois fluently. Then later, I decided to get away and I went to Germany on a student exchange. Also, ich habe Deutsch gelernt, weil ich einen Austausch gemacht uh, habe und uh, ich müsste sieben. So that's my German and thanks to the bully, I also learned German fluently. Later, I went to Costa Rica and lived there for a while. Y puedo hablar en español también. Y uh, me encanta este idioma. So I learned Spanish, French, English and German thanks to the bully. Then at one point, I got to be very, very shy. I was so painfully shy that I got the reputation in school as the kid who can't even talk. And the exchanges were part of what helped me get over that. Well, I was put in a group with the popular girl to give a presentation in English class. And the popular girl says, Sharon, I'm supposed to give a presentation with Sharon. That kid can't even talk. And I could see the whole class looking at me and I felt my face getting really hot. And as usual, I stuttered and I stammered and I couldn't think of anything to say. I didn't think anything I had to say would ever be good enough. I thought I wasn't good enough. I really believed what the bully had said. And I thought nothing I could say would ever be good enough for anyone to hear. But that was the moment that I decided I needed to break out of my shell. I loved people. I needed to learn how to talk to people. So I started a lifelong quest in that moment, deciding I'm going to learn how to talk to people. I'm going to learn how to break out of my shell. I did all of these exchanges. I did a master's in psychology at University of Toronto, and I kept on this quest. What are the secrets of the world's greatest leaders? And what are the secrets of the world's greatest speakers? And how can I use that to inspire and empower a kinder world so that nobody has to go through what I went through? I kept researching, I kept traveling, I kept studying. And I call these the secrets of the world's greatest speakers and the world's greatest leaders. I started to use these secrets and magic, crazy magic started to happen in my life. At one point, uh, I was really upset because I had lost my cousin to suicide after he came out to his family. And I was just absolutely devastated. So I was throwing rocks into the Lake Ontario and whipping them, my tears pouring down my face. And I was like, I'm gonna do something with all this pain. What am I gonna do with all this pain? And I was just like whipping rocks into the Lake Ontario, trying to let go of my pain. Finally I went, I'm gonna do something to save lives of bullied LGBT youth. And I wound up and I whipped the rock into Lake Ontario and I see the glass started to ripple. I could feel these tingles down my spine and I went, something just happened. I don't know what it is, but I felt that. And a couple of years later, a friend of mine invited me to Facebook and I thought, what is this? And then I went, oh, this is where I can inspire a million people. So my first group I started and I called it Thanks a Million. I thought it would be all about the spirit of gratitude and I would get, and I got five people. <laughs> so I kept trying and I kept trying and I kept learning and experimenting and I started getting dozens of people in my Facebook groups. Then I started getting hundreds and then I started getting thousands. One day I woke up early and thought, oh, um, 
I bet we can find a million people who support same-sex marriage. I put a little rainbow flag. I put it up there and went, oh, day one, there were over a thousand people who joined it already. I'm like, what's going on? Day two, 2,000. Day, the next day, there were 4,000, then 8,000. It was doubling and doubling and doubling. One day, I came from home. Uh, from work. I was working at Craft Canada as a bilingual training manager at the time. I came home from work and there were over 500,000 more people than the day before. Click refresh. 10,000 more people. Click refresh. 10,000 more people again. <laughs> oh my god, this is going crazy. Somebody said, I want to sign a petition. So I went, okay, a uh, petition. And I threw together a petition. We got over 60,000 petition signatures. More results than a multi-million dollar charity for the same cause. And we reached over 2 million people in just over two weeks. So if a mute girl can inspire millions, what can you do? Later, I got hired on by a youth business center and they said, look, we've been trying to get government funding for four years. Not a cent. Goose egg. I walked into this place. It was like a tomb. There was nothing happening. I started running my programs and I put together a presentation. And next thing you know, they got their first set of government funding. They got over six million dollars in total since then. So the mute girl can raise over six million dollars with a single speech. What can you do? Secret number one, create a great vision that benefits you, other people, and the planet. I'm going to repeat that. Don't just create goals. People tell you to set goals. Don't set realistic goals. I didn't set realistic goals. I never knew I could get a million people on a Facebook group for same-sex marriage. I just went for it. So create a great vision that benefits you, other people, and the planet.